Hello and welcome. This is Reddit Oscar. Today we are going to be covering all of the longsword moves and techniques that aren't ever covered by the game and are rarely covered by other content creators. Some of these may seem fairly obvious to longsword mains, but as far as I can tell, budding longsword players don't have easy access to this information. Every time I upload a video that uses one of these moves, I get a lot of comments expressing their surprise. So this video is going to condense all the more obscure techniques the weapon has into one more easily digestible format. That said, I suspect even veteran longsword hunters will find one or two things they didn't know about. Let's get started. Number 1. After a successful EI Spirit Slash, you can go straight into the third and then fourth moves of your spirit combo, assuming you have enough gauge. Number 2. After a successful EI Spirit Slash, you could also choose to go into another special sheath and prepare for another counter. Number 3. If you fail an EI Spirit Slash instead of waiting around to be able to roll, you can choose to manually sheath your weapon, in order to do a cool little backstep. If you immediately attack afterwards, your attack will come out very quickly, which puts you back into the relative safety of being able to foresight. Number 4. You can also use Serene Pose after a failed special sheet if you have no other options. Number 5. You can also go into a Helm Breaker after a failed special sheet. Number 6. You can use Small Barrel Bombs to activate Serene Pose. With this, you can take advantage of the double damage Sleeping Monsters take to do a powerful wake up. In some ways, it's even better than the Great Sword Wake Up, since it's much easier to do and will always hit the monster first, even if there are barrel bombs in front of it. Number 7. From a Serene Pose, you can go into the third and fourth moves of your Spirit Combo, provided you have enough gauge. So you should make an effort to use an EI Slash when you notice the monster is falling asleep. That way your gauge can fill up while you set up your wake-up hit. Number 8. Your normal EI Slash can replace Spirit Blade 1 in your Spirit Combo. Number 9. If you use Spirit Blade attacks in the air, you'll do a Jumping Spirit Blade. Once you get to the ground, you can continue your spirit combo starting at spirit blade 2. However, if you do the same thing at spirit level 1 or 2, instead of a jumping spirit blade, you'll do a jumping spirit blade 2. And then when you get to the ground, you can continue at spirit blade 3. At spirit level 3, the jumping spirit blade changes to jump at spirit blade 3. Number 10. If you use a spirit blade attack in the air, but low enough to the ground, it will do a single horizontal slash However, it will still count as a Jumping Spirit Blade, and you'll be able to continue the Spirit Combo. Number 11. When the monster is ready for a Wyvern Ride, you should use an EI Slash to initiate the mount. That way your gauge slowly fills while you're riding the monster, and you'll be able to take advantage of your Jumping Spirit Blade at the knockdown. Number 12. You can use a Fade Slash to start a Spirit Combo. The next move, Spirit Jumping Slash, will replace Spirit Blade 2, and then you can use the third and fourth move of the spirit combo. Number 13. You can interrupt your foresight slash before it does the counter attack by using a helm breaker. This is particularly useful for roars. Number 14. You can also interrupt it with a special sheath. Number 15. You can also interrupt it with a serene pose. Number 16. When you use the spirit reckoning switch skill, if you EI Spirit Slash directly at a monster, it can be hard to land the rest of your Spirit Combo, since you'll end up facing away from the monster. So when you EI Spirit Slash, you should angle your attack in such a way that you can use your Dividing Slash to get back where you need to be. Number 17. You can weave normal attacks after Spirit Blade 1 and 2 without interrupting the Spirit Combo. This is especially useful if you need to build just a little bit of gauge to finish your combo, but don't want to stop what you're doing. Alright, I think that's everything. If there's anything there you didn't know about, please consider giving the video a like to help promote it to more Neophyte Longsword players. And if you already knew every technique in there, then personally I think you should give me a like anyway, as a fellow man of culture. Anyway, as always, thank you guys for watching.